time up. Our guest today is actually the president of the Students Association of the University of Nairobi, also formerly known as SONU, and uh, we are glad to have her here. Anne. Hi. Karibu. Thank you. Finally. Yes. We've been trying to meet up and have this conversation for so many weeks, but you've been busy. It's all things. in God's timing. All in God's timing. Yeah. Karibu sana. Thank you so much for having me. You look so beautiful today. Thank you. I had to. Um, <laughs> it's an honor to be called for a prestigious show like this one. Asante sana. How old are you, Anne? I'm currently 22 years old. 22 years old? Yes. And you're the president of the Student uh, Union Association at Nairobi University. Yes, I actually won when I, uh, when I was 20. <laughs> and Goals. I became the youngest. You um, are the youngest and also? The first female mm -hmm. student leader at the University of Nairobi, president student mm -hmm. leader at the University of Nairobi since its inception. Congratulations. Thank you. That is a really big thing because I can imagine. How, how old is the association for it to have the first female in 2020? Um, the university has been running since 1963. So since then there has never been, there has a, never female been a female president. president. Yes. And Anne is here. She's the female president, the first ever female president of the Association of the Students in the University of Nairobi. Uh, that name is so confusing. First it was Sonu and now it's uh, Unsa. Yeah, Yeah. things had to change because of the Duale bill. There was a bill that was passed in parliament. So mm -hmm. they had to change the name from an organization to an association. Mm -hmm. So that's, the, that's why there's the change from Sonu to Unsa. To Unsa. Yes. How did you get here? I mean, growing up, you've always been a leader. Maybe which schools did you go? I, I don't even know where to start. I'm like, hey, at 20, Yanni, I'm so impressed. <laughs> um, I started my leadership journey um, at a young age. Mm -hmm. I was always, I, I've always been a leader in whatever situation I'm put in. Mm -hmm. um, primary school, I was a student leader. High school, the same thing in church. I used to be among the people who did skits and drama mm -hmm. and all that and I was the leader in that drama. Mm -hmm. um, I go to PCEA and they're called Brigaders. So, um, which, which primary school did you go to? Um, I'm from Nakuru. You're I was born Nakuru. in Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So I went to King's Academy, which mm -hmm. is a school in Nakuru. Um, I also went to high school still in Nakuru, Bahati mm -hmm. Girls Secondary School. Eh, what were Bahati? Are you listening here? This is the this goal. <laughs> eh? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Then from uh, from Bahati Girls, I went and did um, something small in, at, in, in the States and then came to do my law degree mm -hmm. in the University of Nairobi. So you're studying law in the University yes. of Nairobi? Yes. Okay. How did, you, how did you manage to get these people to vote for you? You know, being, being 20 years old, being a woman, running your campaign in Nairobi University, we all know how, how uh, heavy that is because we, we've been following it from the former student leaders like uh, Babu Owino. Tell us about that. Uh, it started off with me getting into the university and then I became a member of an organization called WASWA, which is the Women's Students Welfare Association, mm -hmm. which basically deals with empowering women in the, in the university to be able to achieve their dreams and basically take care of their welfare. Whatever they need, WASWA is there to guide them and help them and show them direction. It's mm -hmm. like you get a mentor mm -hmm. when, you, when you join the university. Mm -hmm. So when I joined WASWA, I was very... Um, outspoken mm -hmm. about women's issues especially hygiene mm -hmm. in the hostels and areas that women are are, uh, are often um, visiting in the mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. and that's how people got to know my name mm -hmm. so I became the secretary general of WASWA mm -hmm. from there I vied in 2018 mm -hmm. as the vice president of the former president his name is Manyara mm -hmm. but I was disqualified mm -hmm. and the fact that I was disqualified got my name even why were you disqualified broader what, what was the story there um, this, the reason as to why I was disqualified is because I vied when I was in first year while the University of Nairobi does not allow first years to vie for an elective position they want you to probably be have some sort of experience in yes. the campus yes. and, and, and understand what the challenges are before you can vie for any seat. Yes. So, but you but you went for it anyway, and you were disqualified. Um, I don't think that I did not have experience mm -hmm. uh, because of the risk. Uh, common strikes in the universities. Mm -hmm. I joined university in 2017, but in 2018, I was still a first year because we went home for a period of nine months because mm. of the lecturer's strike. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I had been in school for a year yeah. should have warranted me to 
given you that experience that they are trying to say That's you must just, have. Yes, yeah. but they said that just by the mere fact that, that you were still, still in first, first year, year, year then, you then couldn't I buy. couldn't buy. So by, the, by that, I'd already got known how to maneuver, mm -hmm. how to campaign, mm -hmm. how to sell uh, the agenda that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, and this when was I was all through experience. And this was just all through learning, experience. Just learning these ropes while you were at... While um, I, I was vying as a vice president, because yeah. you get to see what the president is doing, doing and yeah. you get to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, wi once I was disqualified, that did not make me stop being a leader. I continued serving, mm -hmm. though I was not the vice president. I was um, appointed as the head of the secretariat, because mm -hmm. there is a secretariat in mm -hmm. the university. So I did my work as the head of the secretariat, and then now the next year is when I vied for the president's seat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. When just by you giving that story, I'm getting the impression that you're like, you know, nothing is going to stop me. You're going to disqualify me here. I'll find another way. I'll find another way. I believe that um, in life there are usually hurdles, but mm -hmm. we have to find a way to overcome those hurdles. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect to have a straight line, line in life. Yeah. You'll, you have you'll have corners, but you just have to always stand back up when things seem that, like they're not going your way. Yeah. And as long as you have de determination, commitment, and you believe that you are put there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. I believe I have a purpose in this life. And therefore, however, the, no matter the detours that might come my way, mm -hmm. I believe that I will in the end succeed. Mm -hmm. yes. So do you think you being the first female um, president at uh, University of Nairobi, do you think this has opened the doors for a lot of other possible ladies that would like to vie for this kind of seats at the universities? Yes, most definitely. Um, mm -hmm. We have a multimedia university where a woman vied for the position of president and she was just inaugurated the other day. Mm -hmm. We have Strathmore University where a woman has now become the president of the university. Mm -hmm. We even have Cabrac University and it also has a woman since I became a, 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 the, first the first female yeah. president. It has opened doors and it has shown people that yes, they can go for these seats because sometimes you would find that Probably they had the ambition, but they were like, maybe it can't happen. Yeah. But now we you know it's never happened before. Why? Why do I think I'm going to be the one that changes that? Yes, and yeah. I'm really happy that now we are seeing people accept uh, that. Yes, women leaders can definitely be at the top seat. And you've also come out as a strong champion for um, the fight against against gender-based violence. Um, I know you, you are participating in certain programs that are um, advocating for the rights of women, advocating for, for um, you know, gender parity. What is your take on what's going on now with this two-third gender rule? Um, it's very unfortunate that 10 years after the promulgation of our constitution, mm -hmm. we have still not been able to to follow it to the letter. Yeah. It's, it talks about affirmative action, talks about um, two-thirds gender rule, and it's something that should be, uh, should be really looked at. Yeah. And it's high time that the government does something in order to ensure that it is followed, because we cannot say that we are a country that's governed by the rule of law, yet mm -hmm. we do not follow. Yet we don't follow the law. The law. There's this notion that people say, you know, women, we are our own worst enemies. And, and even with this uh, two-third gender um, rule, um, there was a conversation had around, like, you know, we tried to pass it as legislators, but even the women didn't show up when uh, they should have come to vote for it. What do you really think that this is, uh, I mean, in the spaces that you operate in, I mean, I don't know whether you have experienced it, that women, we are our own worst enemies, or what's your take on that? I believe as women, we need to come together and support each other because mm -hmm. we will not move past this glass ceiling that is there and break it if we do not come together and help each other to to achieve things. Mm -hmm. I could not have become the president of the University of Nairobi at a young age if I wasn't supported by women. Mm -hmm. And women were among my key supporters and my key pillars. And mm -hmm. whenever I felt like I could not do it, they were the ones who kept on encouraging me. They were me. like your support system. Yes, they were my did you, support did you system. Have a mentor, did, you, did you have a mentor during this time who was a woman who actually held your hand and, and took you through um, getting into this uh, student politics and now being on the national platform or 
Um, when I was vying as the president, yes, I did. There were women who had vied before and they had experience and they came and held my hand and told me, Anne, we're going to help you mm -hmm. however much we can. We're going to um, show you how to campaign, how to be strong and assertive. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you, in the University of Nairobi, we have, uh, and it's something that we are trying to get rid of, but there's a culture of goonship. Mm -hmm. And you are a lady and sometimes you cannot uh, get into a campus and campaign because the goons have not yet decided that they want you they've not, so yet, they will, they've not yet accepted you they so have they'll not make a, it so difficult yes for and you. frustrate all your campaigns if you go to this campus your your car is toned or something like that so these women really held my hand and i believe as women if we come together and hold each other's hand and truly believe that together we can be able to achieve so much more mm -hmm. then two-thirds gender rule would not be would even not an even issue an we are issue. talking about 10 yeah. years after yeah. the, the promulgation of the constitution absolutely yes i like that spirit the spirit of understanding that this is this is really a fight for all of us it's not just about one person getting into office yes now <laughs> let me ask you um during i mean we we in in our former actually last week's uh, episode we had uh, we had the student uh, leader for Kenyatta University and uh, he spoke about the campaigns being um, very financially constraining and he didn't have the resources and we asked him like how much did he spend and he talked about around seven hundred thousand up to a million and there was a lot of talks you spent millions on your campaign you know where does she get her money and all this you know propaganda and whatever but how did you manage to actually um run through your campaign they were really tough financially yeah. campaigns are really tough especially if you do not have uh what's the word someone who is financing your campaign mm -hmm. it becomes really tough mm -hmm. but I was very lucky I had um, supportive parents mm -hmm. who helped me here and there mm -hmm. I, I also did a harambe back home before the elections and that boosted me significantly and then because by the mere fact that my campaign was student driven I did not say I want to become chair it was more of students saying yeah we have Pushing seen the you. work you've yes. done in Waswa as the UNSA head secretariat so yeah. we want you to get there so people used to just chip in and my life became a bit easier yeah. and campaigns were not as frustrating yeah. but definitely when you're campaigning especially in the university you need to think about financial um, you need to have a bit of you financial some, some, resor some resources some, some resources or at least some people backing you up yes um, and and it, it seems to me that because of the work that you have done at the university and there's a lot of maybe um, good stories from the people who the lives you've impacted I think that you had a lot of that goodwill coming back from the students yes. but then again you also were on the national platform and you have been um, associated with Governor Sonko who's strong on the youth agenda like he is pushing for the youth to get empowered and stuff like that and I can see how um, you know you had some collaboration with him and how he supported your campaign is it true that he supported your no, campaign no 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 okay um, I believe by the mere fact that I was a woman and I was buying and it nobody expected a woman, a woman to, to win. Buy and win yes to buy yeah. and win nobody wanted to put uh, <laughs> their chips on that nobody wanted to bank on you yes invest in you exactly yeah. so um, I, I, I would like to say that um, though we have been able to work together after I became uh, I became chair, yes. um, before mm -hmm. we had no sort of association. He actually got to know about you because of the work that you did once you got elected. Yes. Okay. And being by the mere fact that I'm a, that Nairobi University and many of its campuses, University of Nairobi has 12 campuses yeah. from Mombasa to Kisumu, yeah. and a majority of them are in Nairobi County. Yeah. So the, it is important that I was able to have a working rapport with yeah. the governor because yeah. he helped us in a, in a, in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. I remember there was a time that one of my campuses is in Kenya Science, mm -hmm. Gong Road, mm -hmm. did not have water for, and it has not had water for over 10 years and we had um, just by mere uh, just by writing a letter to the county we were able to get people to come and open water yeah in that campus and, and, and now and, there's and water now there's water in there so I mean that also shows um, even as a student leader I guess one of the things that I take from this conversation is you must find ways to collaborate with those in national politics, with the governors, with the counties and, and stuff like that? Yes, definitely. I remember when I won, one of the first people to reach out to me was um, um, Honorable Rachel Shebesh and mm -hmm. she really helped me in terms of getting into the Ministry of Youth and Gender because at the time um, youth was under gender. Under gender, yes. yes. And 
together with women leaders, they came together and really helped me once I won, mm -hmm. really helped me to maneuver the field and actually even get to do the event that I did at University of Nairobi against gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. As you could see, we were me to get, uh, we were together with other women legislators, about 30 of them showed up. Mm -hmm. They brought um, CS Matiangi, mm -hmm. they brought Honorable Jokindungu, mm -hmm. they brought so many people on board yeah. just by the mere fact that we were able to collaborate, to collaborate and work yeah. together. So when you're a student leader, I would say that yeah. it's important that you do not only put yourself in a cocoon of working ah. in the university That's and only yeah. in the university. In isolation. Yeah. Yes, you need to be able to broaden your field to the national uh, uh, people in the national politics. I was a, I've been able to work with corporates and bring corporates into the university so that our students are able to get internships mm -hmm. um, in these different corporates. So that to just minimize this notion that's there that you will graduate and you have to tarmac for two to, years. Yes, yeah. Yes. So as a student leader, you have to be an all round person. Yeah. Well, you definitely are an all-rounded person. In fact, I was just thinking to myself while you spoke, you're 22, you've achieved so much. We haven't even begun talking about your legacy, the legacy that you're leaving as a student leader, but I can see so much potential. Like, you know, we are getting into an election year, 2022, and um, just by virtue of the networks that you have built and by virtue of the work that you have done, uh, are we looking at a women representative of Nairobi County? Um, <laughs> are we looking at an MP, a governor perhaps? <laughs> I would like to say that um, mm -hmm. I am really passionate about empowerment of the young people mm -hmm. and I have 13 years between now and the time I get out of being a youth. So Absolutely. I would really want to work with the youth mm -hmm. and ensure that the youth are empowered. Mm -hmm. About 2022, it's still... Um, it's neither here nor there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when time comes, that we will divulge. <laughs> um, but you're one thing, getting one into thing, the elective space. One thing that I would tell you is mm -hmm. I was the last person to announce my candidature when I was vying mm -hmm. and I won. So I'm not saying that I'm using the same tactic, <laughs> but uh, I would want that people see the work that I've done and from the work that I've done, then mm -hmm. probably get into something else. Okay. Well, it sounds good. I mean, I believe that uh, you're going to vie. I actually just from listening with your interactions and everything, I think you should go for the Nairobi County Women Representative seat because, I mean, we need to demystify what that seat is about. Some people just think it's just a seat where we, we elect a woman to sit and then give uh, go and distribute sanitary towels in underserved regions. But I think from what I hear from you, you understand what it means to empower the youth and I really believe that that's something maybe you should go for. Yes, I have even started a non-governmental organization called Tuaweza mm -hmm. and it is uh, in the process of registration and mm -hmm. once we are able to register this NGO, it will be to empower young people and women mm -hmm. in different sectors for them to be able to um, better their lives. Yeah. Yes. So being a young woman in this space, in the political space, in the governance space, um, what advice would you give other young women out there? There's, 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 a, there's a first year university student who's thinking, okay, she joined Waswa and she was this and she was this, this is the career pathway that she took and this is the su success she has. Above and beyond just, you know, showing them how you can get there. What is that extra advice that you can, you can give aspiring uh, leaders like you? Um, I would say that they need to have a tough skin it is very important for you to be able to be blown punches and still rise up because we, uh, even as much as we want a utopia kind of world where we as women are fully accepted and you say that I am vying for this position and everybody th starts looking at your track record, that's not the case. So they need to have a tough skin so that whatever is thrown at them, they can be able to say, you know what, that's fine, but I'm still going with my course. I want to get here and I'm going to work hard so that I can get there. Um, especially, uh, also work hard, believe in God. Um, have people who inspire you, have people who help you attain your dreams, and those who do not, you shouldn't be friends with them. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard you say you have to have a tough skin. I know a lot has been said about you and, and um, you know, some negative, some positive, and, and I see you here in person. 
and I can see that you know it doesn't really affect you because you know where you're going. So maybe that's that's one thing I will take as advice as well. Have a tough skin. And yes, definitely. For you, um, people don't. Um, there's a, I, I will try and paraphrase this. It's like a saying in Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. um, they say that only a good tree is the one. A tree with fruits. You no can point. say it in Kikuyu, and then we paraphrase. <laughs> I'll say a, a good tree with fruits is the one that's usually thrown for stones. Uh -huh. and you're the fruits, the young so they can fruit, the fruits, yeah. Exactly. The one that doesn't have fruits, we Nobody, are not interested Exactly. In. <laughs> so if you see people have an issue probably with you, you're doing something you're right. You're doing something right. Yeah. By the way, do you subscribe to the Hustler Nation uh, movement? Is that something that, I mean, this whole wheelbaronomics kind of things, what do you, what's your take on it? Um, my take on it is that different people need different kind of empowerment. Um, there's someone who that wheelbarrow will really help. Mm -hmm. There's somebody, if they're given a laptop, and that's why I keep on saying, they should also think about the university students because the university students have been thrown into an era of COVID-19 and they're being told, do online learning. Mm -hmm. They don't have laptops, they don't have smartphones. Mm -hmm. So it will help someone, there's someone, somebody who will, um, who will benefit from it mm -hmm. and they should not forget about others too. The youth do not only comprise of the people who are um, out there in the streets mm -hmm. hustling, mm -hmm. the youth also comprise of people who are out here hustling for jobs, mm -hmm. the youth, youth also comprise of people who are in the universities and need laptops. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is important that they that the youth are empowered and mm -hmm. I like youth empowerment. So mm -hmm. whichever form of youth empowerment, the other day we saw the president go to Taita Taveta yes. and we saw innovation from young people. Mm -hmm. So how... W so any form of empowerment. Any form of yeah. empowerment whether to the youth. Whether it's a wheelbarrow, whether it's um, ICT, whether it's, uh, like you said, uh, laptops, laptops to university because students. Because university students now need yes. laptops. <laughs> they should think about the youth because the youth are the ones who wake up very early in the morning to mm. go and vote. The youth are the ones who show up mm -hmm. to their rallies, mm -hmm. but they are promised so much. But when it comes to delivering, yeah. I think that they are short changed yeah so it's about time that they do focus on the on the on, majority on the majority so yes. so for you this is an, just another form of empowerment to the youth this hustler nation movement and any empowerment to the youth is a plus from both it. sectors yeah um, from both sectors both political divides, both political yes. divides. Yes. if they will empower the youth the better yeah so i would <laughs> like to call upon the deputy president we have seen you do a lot of work in terms of empowering the youth i would also like to tell you that university students not only at the university of nairobi but across kenya also are youth and they will be voters mm -hmm. therefore also think about them find a way of, of giving reaching of to reaching them. out to them probably mm -hmm. giving them laptops giving them an opportunity to advance their career because not everybody mm -hmm. as i said everybody has different paths that they will take mm -hmm. there are some who do need the wheelbarrow and there's others who, who need, need laptops who need laptops Thank you so much for that, like we've had. So there are some guys who need wheelbarrows, that is what they need to start their enterprises or you know, further themselves or empower their lives. And there are others, like Anne has told us, the University of Nairobi students who need laptops so that they can go on their online classes. So any form of empowerment is good for the youth and we are supporting any form of empowerment from either side of the political divide as Anne says that. So thank you so much for watching this uh, show and you can follow us on our social media channels. You can uh, tweet us and you can send us your feedback and also make sure that you watch, uh, catch us next week for our other guests who are here to empower the youth and we are here to celebrate youth leaders like Anne. Asante Sana for joining us. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. Asante.